What's going on, guys? Thanks for tuning back into the Finding J channel. We're gonna be uh, witcherizing the RV today. Hopefully, we can save some of you guys between 150 and 200 dollars, and uh, we're gonna be doing it through the dealership. So we can do how they do it and save some money. We just got here and we're about to go inside and get through this appointment. rider and uh, he's gonna send a tech out to come and get my vehicle and the RV and they're gonna take us to the back and we're gonna start the uh, process of winterizing the camper. Jay has a, a black tank flush so we're gonna hit it real quick with some air just to push any kind of water that may be in the line to the black tank. So I'm screwing it in here, that's your black tank flush. I'm just gonna hit it, like I said, real quick, three times. That's all you need, just to make sure it goes past the uh, diverter inside. Okay, is there any, any amount of, uh, what's the a, what's a amount of, of pressure that we need on the hose to do this? Well, we're dealing with about 85 pounds here, that's why I didn't want to go and keep it on there. Right. That's why I went, just real quick blast, because there's okay. no pressure or anything on it, it's just going to push the water right on through your black tank. Okay. Is there a safe number to be on, on that, on that pressure hose? 45 or 50 pounds. Okay. With 45 or 50 pounds, that can, um, the burst can be a little longer? A little bit longer, yes. It but just don't keep it on there. No, you don't want to keep it on there, no. Do you have your hose for this? I do. Where's it at? It's in the front. He has a uh, quick air disconnect on his uh, outside shower. So you need the hose to then help uh, blow this out. What we're doing to do is push all the water from all the faucets into the black tank and the gray tank and then when we're done with everything we'll take it over and dump it okay so, so when you're when you're blowing the lines it's just pushing everything into the black tank so you black don't have tank to you and don't, gray tank okay and you don't have so you don't have to have the nozzles pulled for this no not yet okay you want to make sure they're closed and i gotta make sure because you don't want to dump it until you're done with everything got it all right so what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and put the air compressor on your line and you always want to leave one valve open so you're not, since we're dealing with such high pressure here, so what I'll do is when I get this blown out here, I'm going to leave the one of these just open a little bit, and we'll go inside and we'll grab all the faucets, make sure we push all the water through there. Okay. <clears throat> That's crazy, all the water I was still in there. Yep. I do one faucet, one side at a time, cold water, then hot water, it doesn't matter, but... Sorry, I don't want to... You don't want to do both at the same time. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed as to how much water is still in the line. I'm going to just open this up just a little bit. Leave this just open. I don't want to blow it everywhere, so I'm just trying to. We'll go inside, we'll open up all the faucets, make sure we push all the water out through all the water. Okay. 
And those nozzles, on, the, the knobs on this side, are they open or closed? Are they... One is open about halfway. And the other one's closed? Right. Because we're dealing with a lot of pressure, I don't want it to blow a line out, so that's right. why I, I got you. just leave one of those open. So I'll come here with the outside faucet. One side first, then the other side. Doesn't matter if it's hot or cold, as long as you hit them both. And you do that till, the, till, uh, till all the water's out? Mm -hmm. Wow, I would have never thought that there was still so much water in the lines. Hot. Both sides. Yep. Same thing with the faucet, the toilet, and the shower. And like I said previously, what we're trying to do is just push all the water down into the tanks. Okay. Now, the, uh, are you opening the knobs all the way on the on these? Yeah. Okay. On everything except. You only leave the one outside a little bit so that you don't build so too much pressure and, and blow the line. Correct. I got you. I want to flush the toilet. And shower. That's pretty much it with all the water. Now, if you would happen to have a wash and dryer hookup, you would want to go ahead and put a hose on those and make sure you flush the water out of those also. But you do not have one here. No, I don't. So I've already previously looked for it. Okay. All right, now what we're going to do is sort of set it up for winterizing. Now, Jay, you have a tankless water heater, which means you do not have a bypass on it. Okay. But you do have a valve. I'll show you the back of it. Okay. Like I showed you in the winter, I'd be winterizing it. All you have is just the one single valve for minimum or maximum flow going through it, the little white valve. I see it, yeah. So all I did was just make sure it was open all the way. Okay. And that's how you gotta do it, a tankless water heater. Okay. And I believe that's how we left it last time, right? All the way right. open? Okay, right. so that just stays the same. We don't have to really mess with that, no, right? No, we don't have to mess with it. Okay. All right. All right, uh, now what we'll do is we'll go outside, okay. disconnect the air, and okay. we'll go and uh, I'll show you the winter that you have on. Okay. Now I remember last year we went under the fridge over here. Is there anything under there we have to do? I don't know what was underneath there. I, I already checked I, for an ice maker. Right, underneath, I believe you pulled out the cabinet and to see if there was a cutoff or something. Uh, oh, did you have a, uh, a low line drain maybe? Uh, well, since we're shooting the air through everything, I know we're not losing pressure through there. Right. So I know they're capped off. Okay. Let me go and make sure anyhow. I did not remember that. But when you shoot, shoot air with it, yeah, I can see the valves are open, so that's fine. Okay. So all those valves, they could technically stay like that, all of them, either one down there and this one. The only thing, if you would have to have a bypass on a water heater, a regular one, you need to switch those around. Right. So you don't need to put antifreeze into a regular water heater. Because okay. you'll use six or ten gallons and it's you don't need. All you gotta do is make sure it's drained. Okay. Now with tankless, we're gonna be shooting antifreeze through it okay. to make sure it comes out the hot side. Uh, so in this situation, for winterizing or dewinterizing, I never really have to mess with that tank or no. that. Okay, sounds easy enough. Okay. 
towel on the other side. So again, we just leave a, we just leave that open just to make sure that the air doesn't blow the lines. I got gotcha. you. Right now, I'm shutting them off. But if I'm doing between 45 to 50 pounds of pressure, do you I still? Should be all right. I don't have to open that. Right. Okay. Okay. So I noticed that over here, this is open. What's back here? That is your water pump. Okay. Also with Jayco's, most of the new ones, they have what's called a winterizing kit on it. Okay. What it is, Jayco puts his clear hose on it. There is a valve back here okay. that you would open or close. Depends on when you want either usage for winterizing. Okay. You wouldn't use it for any other time. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the valve with the hose, and that's going to open this up. There's another valve right here to shut off the flow from your fresh water tank, okay. which I've already previously shut it off. Normally, using it, it's going to be down, so it's going to be drawing the water from your fresh water tank. We're going to shut that flow off. That valve is open, and all we need to do is stick this into a gallon antifreeze. Previously, this valve here, what it does is feeds from the fresh water tank, or it draws from this hose. I had it open earlier, and what we were doing was putting antifreeze into the fresh water tank. So I switched it back over and I turned the pump on until we build up pressure and the pump shut off by itself. That's another good way to find out if you happen to have a leak inside or something like that anytime you want to use it. But anyhow, I got the line pressurized and now what we're going to do is sort of previously, we're going to have antifreeze, we're going to get antifreeze through all your faucets, your toilet, and all the lines. Now, is the pump still on when you're doing this? Pump is on right now. Okay. As soon as we start relieving pressure, it will come back on. Okay, you just have that on until you see pink coming out here. I will go inside and get all your faucets, kitchen faucet, bathroom, shower, and the toilet. Okay. Meanwhile, leaving the pump on. Right, leave the pump on. And this would help close the pump out of the tank and then the faucet down. Outside faucet. A lot of air in the line now. pink same thing with your cold side all right we'll go inside now wipe this all and it's done now this switch over here does it tell you open or close is there a thing that, that it mark doesn't tell you one way or the other right now i have the valve open and this is the way it would be open. Normally, if you're using your fresh water tank, you would have that shut off like it is. But you want to leave it, have it, leave it on, or leave it open. So this way, if there's any water, it's going to drain out. And there's no chance of water being frozen in your tank and possibly expanding and broke, breaking it. Okay. So if it's open, wouldn't that push the antifreeze through it? No. Because right now, with that valve over there, we bypass the fresh water tank. Oh, I got you. So you don't need to have antifreeze in your fresh water tank. Just got to make sure. So let me ask you this. If I'm not using my fresh water tank, that can technically stay open all the time? Yes, it can. Okay, so. And that's probably the way it was, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I believe it was. Uh, in my case. All right, now we're going to get your kitchen faucet. Good pink. Full side. That's pink. We'll go up in your kitchen. And we may have to get one more gallon, maybe, but we'll see what we can do. Okay, 
you hear your pump, build no pressure and it will shut off. Take the toilet, pink, pitch in the faucet, pink, pink, and then your shower. It. I'm trying to think of what I do now is I'll bring in a part gallon antifreeze and I'll dump it down all your traps, shower especially. But your all the pea traps will hold about a cup of water. So what we're going to do is push the water out through and leave antifreeze in the pea trap. This way it helps protect protects the uh, pea traps. Okay. So and then wipe up, and that's pretty much what we do. I just want to make sure we had the valve in the right spot so we're not throwing it back into the fresh water. Okay. So we're draining the uh, the spray hose. Right. That has one. That has antifreeze going through it anyway. Antifreeze so. going through it anyhow. Okay. It so it's not making a mess inside your uh, compartment. Okay. And I'm not sure where you kept that. At. We'll go ahead. You can leave it right there on my bumper, and I'll put it away. The biggest thing is anywhere you've had water at, you want to make sure you get antifreeze through it. Okay. Now, now just to make sure, because I don't, I don't remember covering this part when we did winterize. Well, it was already in the regular thing. We wouldn't have had to touch this. When you go back to dewinterizing, I'm going to switch this valve back to where it was at. Okay, so, so. When we're done winterizing it, you're gonna put the valve back anyway. Right. That's why when you dewinterize, you don't have to touch it. Right. I got you. And that's why it came from manufacturer too. Okay. So kindness. when it's time to dewinterize, I don't even have to open up this compartment. You shouldn't it, have to, no. Because the lever's already gonna be switched over. I'm gonna switch this back to normal use. And these valves they only turn a quarter of a turn. They can be tight sometimes. Okay. So I guess you could say it's it's more so uh, when you're gonna run the antifreeze, you you, you 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 switch it, and then when you're done with antifreeze, switch it back. Right. Okay. How about that white lever? White lever, we've got to switch it back over. So when you're ready to use it, uh, see so that pump's gonna come back on. Let me go ahead and the pump off. switch it over so when you're ready to use it it'll be ready for you to use uh, so we put this valve back this pad will put back on Easy enough. 